Hey, Panther fans. I'm here today with Italia Iosef, and she's a former Chafee Panther herself, and she's come back to Chafee as a faculty member. Thank you for joining me today, Italia. Thanks so much for having me. It's a, like such an honor. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you joined us. Um, so why don't you share with them um, what sport you played? So I was a two-sport athlete. I did women's water polo and women's swim and from 2004 to 2006. I guess I started in 04, yeah, graduated in 06. So I did freshman, sophomore year there. And uh, what coach did you play under? I had Jim Doff and Jennifer Moon and Ty Hudson. So oh, Jim wow. was the head coach. And then we had Jen Moon as our assistant and Ty was an assistant as well. And um, how was it playing under um, Coach Doff? He's pretty very at Chafee. So it was like the best. I'm still actually, so that core group of us is really cool. Um, we all transferred to Cal State San Bernardino together. And then we still like, we've been in each other's weddings. They just threw me a baby shower. We went, um, the year that I was there, I think was like the first year coach decided to do like an out of state, um, out of state tournament. So we went to Hawaii together. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, we got, it, my sophomore year, we went to Hawaii in the summer and we just had so much fun. And coach, uh, coach was like, he's just such a fun guy. He's like the fun, like he's just funny and fun. And so, um, yeah, we went to Hawaii together and I think it just solidified our bond. So 15 years later, we're still thick as thieves, you know? That's but, awesome. Yeah. Um, what brought you to Chafee? Coach. <laughs> Coach. Um, actually, he really recruited me to, to swim. Uh, I was a in his eyes, a better swimmer <laughs> than a water polo player. Um, and he was probably right. <laughs> so he, I still remember him. I went to Ayala High School, so I still remember him. He was at like one of those um, big, uh, like it's called the Walnut Invitational, or I think now it's called the Mount Sac Invitational, or maybe in when you're at community college, it's called Mount Sac. But he was at one of those big invitationals and he came over and he just, he did his doff thing. He smooth talked me and told me, you know, if, if I came to Chapey, I would have a great time and he could, you know, and he was right. So I went to Chafee and then the rest is history. I still tell every single one of my students, anyone who's not already at Chafee. So all of my high school students, I'm always like community college is the way to go. <laughs> it's the best thing you could do. So yeah, coach, coach, cause I grew up in Chino Hills. So Mount Sac was actually closer but I went to Chafee because of coach. So. Um, what major, what uh, was your focus of study at the college? So I have my AA in philosophy. I ended up with a bachelor's and a master's degree in philosophy as well, but my focus at Chafee was philosophy. So. And did you have a mentor or a favorite professor while you were there? I did, and his name is Ryan Falcioni. So he definitely, um, I already had an interest in philosophy, but I think taking I taking his courses just made that interest. I <laughs> this doesn't sound weird, but I was like I remember thinking like when I grow up I want to be him. <laughs> 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 like this guy is so cool, and his classes are so fun and interesting, and I loved that he. It was a dialogue in his class, you know, and so it's. I thought, wow, he just seems so happy and he seems to like really love what he's doing. This is, that's what I want. So yeah, Falcioni was kind of my, he was my inspiration. <laughs> well, those are two really good mentors to have. Um, both of them actually swam for Chafee and then came back as um, faculty and staff members at the college as well, so. I, yeah, I knew that. Well, and actually the year, one of the years that I was swimming, Ryan was the assistant coach for the mm -hmm. boys. So that's, I probably, I got to know him even better there. And his brother was swimming at the time too, his youngest. John. John. John and I swam together and we got in trouble. <laughs> well, John went on to be a, um, a state scholar athlete. Um, yeah, John was brilliant. I don't, I can't claim the amount of, I, can't, I don't know that I was as brilliant as John, but he was always, and he was an, a great athlete as well. He was a really, really impressive swimmer from what I recall. I think he's a lawyer now, so like good for John. 
So. Um, but th yeah, those are some some good footsteps to follow in, and I'm sure that they are impressed that you followed in them as well and came back. Yeah. To college, so. um, how did you manage being a student and a student athlete at the same time? You know, it was actually pretty tough. My first year, I wasn't just an, a student athlete. I was also working. Uh, I was a hostess at a restaurant. So um, it was pretty, like, I remember, well, coach made it a little bit easier because we had a, you know, our practice started at 1.30, I think it was, or one o'clock, and we were able to be done by 3.30, which enabled me to, to work afterward. And then we had I just took classes in the morning. So my day was really full. Um, that first year though, if I'm being honest, I, I, I was always eligible, but by the skin of my, you know, I had a few, a few C's. I was not achieving to my potential. Um, I think learning that balance, learning my priorities, um, that was something that I had to kind of mature into. So um, it just became, I think sports really motivated me though, because I never wanted to be the person on the team who was ineligible. So um, be, there was kind of that, sports was a double-edged sword. Like it took a lot of time, but at the same time I had that kind of, I needed to save face for my teammates. So, um, and then coach did this thing where like, we took a lot of our classes together. So like history, English classes, there were always about four or five of us in the same class. And so we motivated, we motivated each other. And that, I think that that's what helped me get through. Like I had my teammates in class with me. So they would ask like, did you finish the paper? And if I said no, someone would be like, well, you need to get on it, you know, or vice versa. So I think that's what really helped me get through. I was just saying that uh, I was able to be successful because we took classes. Like coach not only tried to have us be a team in the water, but a team in class too. And I think that made a big difference, which also is probably why we're still friends to this day. That's so. awesome that you're able to create those bonds um, that have lasted now over a decade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 60 years. <laughs> I know, I think we have babies, like we were, uh, we were talking about this the other day and we have starters and subs, <laughs> 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 full, full team. Full water polo team, <laughs> you know, the, the kids don't know that they're going to be a water polo team, but, but we, we've decided for them. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've been bridesmaids in each other's weddings. Like it's, yeah. And it all, it all started at Chafee. So. Um, you said that you were, that you transferred to Cal State San Bernardino and yeah. got your bachelor's degree in philosophy. Um, were you able to play? Yeah. You know? I did. Yeah. Um, I was, I think we were kind of like a feeder school for, for Cal State, uh, <laughs> really. Um, what's sad is they don't have a program anymore. It was, um, I don't know, disbanded. I don't know. They, in favor of track and field. Um, they felt that it brought track and field was more financially, uh, I don't know, soluble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the word for it is. Like track and field would bring more athletes and more, more money. So we, our team and the women's team, I think they only had a women's team maybe three years for after I graduated, they only had a women's team for like three or four more years after that. Um, but I was lucky enough that Tom Finwell was the coach at Cal State San Bernardino and he came in here. They didn't have a swim team there. They only had a water polo team. Um, so he came and recruited like five of us from, <laughs> he swooped up about four or five of us to go play for him at, at San Bernardino. So I got to play there. And um, our big claim to fame is we beat Santa Barbara. <laughs> so uh, we beat Santa Barbara once, caught him sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and so we beat them and we were beating USC at half. And then um, the SC coach got very, very upset. <laughs> Suddenly we were losing 20 to something, but, <laughs> but we had a good little run there. So, yeah. Um, and I, I say that with pride because really the foundation of that team was my Chafee team. So, you know, we, we carried our, what we learned, our skills from Chafee, we carried them over. So yeah, we had quite a few, quite a few people who 
bounced on over to we went from panthers to coyotes so. <laughs> yeah. um um after san bernardino you earned your master's degree and you were sharing with me that you're a um special ed teacher in alto and um but you're also at chafee what's your role at the college so I'm an adjunct professor. I teach critical thinking. I did do one semester of intro. Um, and then I got wise to the fact that I could teach critical thinking <laughs> <laughs> and was like, oh, could I teach that instead? Um, so now I've been doing critical thinking. And yeah, so I, I don't get a lot of classes, which that's OK. Um, I think the amount that I have right now is good because <laughs> I can focus. Um, but yeah, so philosophy and I, I get to teach the critical thinking courses, which pers are my personal favorite, actually. So I got lucky there. What brought you back to Chafee? Um, well, like I said, you know, I had this idea that when I grew up, I wanted to be Falcioni. <laughs> so um, actually, when I finished my master's degree, I went back. I came back and told, you know, said like, hey, you know, I'm really interested. Could I, could I possibly teach a class? And Ryan said, yeah, you just need to just, you just need to apply. And um, I never applied. <laughs> I never <laughs> submitted an application. I just didn't think, I don't know, I had, you know, I was only like 24 and I just thought like, there's no way I could teach a philosophy class. Like, yes, I have the schooling, but I'm just not, I'm not good enough. I had this idea, I'm not good enough. And then um, I, I got my teaching credential. I, I moved to Spain. I taught English in Spain for a couple of years. I was an assistant coach um, at Citrus College for water polo. Um, I was an assistant coach at Pitzer College for water polo. And I just started having more experience with college students. And then I finally was like, okay, I think I could actually, I think I could, I think I could be a professor in a classroom, maybe now, maybe now I'm good enough. So I came back and uh, asked if there were any, I saw actually, I saw online that there were adjunct positions. So I actually applied this time <laughs> and I, and I made my, it was kind of like a lifelong dream. I made my dream come true basically. So um, it had always been a dream and now I get to live it and it's awesome. The only, the only bad part is I don't get to see my, I want to say kiddos, but they're adults. <laughs> I don't get to see, I guess my students, I don't get to see my students in person right now, but even still, even just the interaction online is wonderful. It's so nice to have the opportunity to um, work with and get to know my students and support them in a way that I was supported, you know, because I felt really supported by Ryan and other faculty as well, you know, my coaches and stuff. So I wanted to give the same thing back to upcoming students. Um, what year did you rejoin Chafee? When did you start teaching? Um, 20. 18? Yeah, fall 2018. Okay. So I'm pretty new. I'm still learning. <laughs> the <laughs> professor world. Um, do you have a favorite Chafee memory since you've been back? Since I've been back? Yeah. Um, a student story that's touched you? Yeah. I'm trying, you know, <laughs> um, I've had so I know this is going to sound really lame, but I actually just like I, I was like just curious. So I Googled myself and I do have uh, they they I was like, did anybody write anything about me on the rate my professor? So um, I looked and I have two ratings because <laughs> um, actually my so maybe maybe it was fall 2019. The in March was my second semester, really, I think, of teaching at Chafee. So, and I had taught critical thinking and we got cut off in the middle of the semester, right? So I didn't really have um, a lot of opportunity to connect. So the fact that one of my students went back in August to write something nice about me was like really touching. So I've had a couple emails um, from students and I saw that that basically just said like thanks for being there um, and so so far that's been that's that's been very like okay I'm doing something right um, but I feel like I'm so new still that I haven't totally had the chance to like 
really make an impact. But so far I've had those, those emails, uh, they just like, when you're feeling down, it's kind of just like, just what you need. You know, someone to say like, hey, you know, you're, you're making my, you've, you've made my day better. Just knowing that I'm doing that for somebody, like it's all I, that's all I wanted as a professor. That's all I wanted to do. Like some people's passion is like the subject matter. My passion is supporting, like being a cheerleader for my students, letting them know that somebody out there cares about them and is there to like help give them that push. So when they tell me that I'm actually doing that, it's like, oh, yay, I'm doing what I saw out to do, you know? So maybe nothing concrete. It's just been like, you know, that email and those reviews that made me feel really, really good. So I guess that. That's awesome that you've been able to connect with our students um, virtually since we're in this, this unusual um, method of teaching right yeah. now, especially in the subject matter that you've been able to create those connections with our with our students so congratulations on that that's that's pretty, that's pretty great so so now i'm thinking maybe i started fall 2019 must have been my first not 2018 fall 2019 okay. because spring 2020 was my second semester at Chief. okay so still a newbie yeah have a little baby <laughs> um to sum it all up what advice would you have for our current students you know, I'm going to give a piece of advice that a professor gave me once, and it took me a really long time to actually digest it. But when I finally did, I saw a lot of doors opening for me. And that was, um, he said to me once, let them tell you no. So um, what he meant by it, I was applying to graduate schools. And there was a few that I thought were way out of my league. And he was like, so what? Let them tell you no. Um, worst case, they say no, like you thought they did, and you're where you started. Best case scenario, you you get in. And um, I had, uh, I kind of just never thought I was good enough for a lot of things. And I delayed what I think would have been, like I said, I didn't apply, you know, 10 years ago to be a professor at Chafee. And um, who knows, maybe had I applied then, maybe now I would be full-time like I had always <laughs> dreamed and hoped to be. Um, maybe I was right, maybe I wasn't mature enough, but I, I, took, that, I took that off the table for myself um, as opposed to kind of giving myself that chance. So I, would, I wanna tell everyone out there, like let, let those people tell you no. Don't, don't take your opportunities away um, just because you don't believe in yourself. So I guess the ultimate thing is like, believe, believe in yourself and it's okay. It's okay if someone tells you no, it doesn't mean anything bad about you. It means maybe you just have to get a little bit more experience or, you know, and once you put yourself out there like that, if someone does tell you no, it's a starting point from where you can see what you need. But if you never try, you don't know how to proceed. You, you won't learn, you know, it's not, you lose out on that learning opportunity. So I know, um, and it's the same in sports, right? If you don't take that shot and miss, you can't learn how to take that shot better the next time. So, um, you know, in sports or in life, you know, shoot your shot, I guess, you know, shoot your shot, believe in yourself. And if you miss, that's okay. Right. So be failure is not forever. So just do it, try it, go for it, make mistakes. So yeah, all, they're all kind of the same idea, but that's what I would say. That was what I, I've learned over the last 10 years. So, yeah. I think that's some great advice actually is uh, don't, oh, thanks. don't discount yourself, you know, go, go for it. And yeah. They say shoot for the stars, you know, and, and you've truly done that. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah, so. Well, thanks. thanks. Yeah, I thank hope you. I. Thank you for joining me today, Italia. It's been really fun um, meeting you and talking to you. Um, you actually played for us before I started at Chafee, right before we right before I started at Chafee. So it's been great talking to you and, and hearing what you were up to um, um, after your Chafee years. And we are so happy to have you back on campus. Well. Back it is out, and then we're gonna welcome you back to campus. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really been like a dream come true. I 
I absolutely love Chafee. I think it's a great place to be. Wonderful school culture. Um, it has my heart <laughs> forever. You know, I'll be a Panther forever, no matter what. So yeah, thank you for having me. And I hope you have a really nice day. And to all my Panthers out there, we're proud of you. <laughs> <laughs>